Good morning, traders, fellow privateers. Welcome to the week ahead preview from your friends at Privateer FX. I hope everyone, all you Americans had a, and fathers had a nice Father's Day. Um, got the U.S. Open running on my on my screens here. Looks like uh, Gary Woodland, unless he completely implodes on number 18, is going to win his first U.S. Open. Although Kepka is putting for birdie as we speak, and he's missed it. So, anyhow, it's a good way to, especially here in the Midwest where we've had a, just awful weather. It's about 55 degrees Fahrenheit, and it's June, you know, middle of June. Um, still waiting. I guess the uh, forecasters were right when they said that we could expect a very cool summer here in the Midwest. Anyhow, let's get right down to it. Um, talk a little bit about the <clears throat> events coming out this coming week. Oh, there's quite a lot of macro risk. And we'll go through some charts and uh, I'll leave you at that. Get your week started. <clears throat> Anyhow, like I said, uh, you know, pretty pretty heavy macro week. We got the FOMC on Wednesday. We got the BOJ, the Bank of England, and the Norges Bank. Uh, we also have European CPI data, which I can't imagine is going to be anything but low, and Eurozone PMI data, the advanced numbers, and we also have the EU Summit. Um, out of New Zealand, we got their first quarter GDP number. Um, we got the German ZEW, so <clears throat> that is uh, it's kind of a macro risk. We have some other some other second tier data which we're not going to concern ourselves with. Um, I'm going to look at the weekly charts here. You can see we'll go through a few here. We had some inside weeks, you know, kind of a uneventful week for the dollar index. You know, did have a decent up up move, but, you know, still inside the previous week, you know, obviously the Euro dollar is going to look very similar, um, inverted or in reverse with an inside week. Uh, Euro Norway caught my attention here. Let's pull that weekly up here. I want a second Euro Naki. Like I said, we do have the Norges Bank. We've had, um, we had a doji week two weeks ago, first week of June, and then we had another kind of inverted hammer, but it's fairly indecisive week. You can see how, you know, we had this big run up from the end of April, and now the past month, it's, it's really been uh, just kind of sideways going nowhere. So I'd be playing the break of either side of last week's range, um, especially with the Norges Bank, you know, obviously these highs here, 985 and then you know down here the low is pretty well defined. So I, I call it 985 or 975. Uh, write that down now. <clears throat> 90, break of 95 or 975 looks like you could get some legs in either direction. Uh, dollar China had an inside week, understandably, with the euro dollar index not doing anything or you know being inside. Um, you know, I don't even know what to say about this thing. Either break seven soon, and that would probably be, you know, more on the back of the G20 meeting at the end of the month, or we're going to retrace some of this uh, this big up move we've seen in the past six weeks or so. Uh, emerging markets, I also noticed that Dollar Rand had a, a very quiet bar week after, you know, a, a decent run-up since, since April, really. <clears throat> As far as uh, outside or bearish engulfing, we've got one in Aussie yen. It's a bit of a you know risk off barometer, and we also had one in Kiwi yen, um, which makes a lot of sense because the two weakest majors were Aussie and Kiwi last week. Uh, Kiwi dollar was down two point six percent, and the Aussie dollar is about one point eight. The euro was down a the euro and cable were both down about a percent. Um, dollar yen was up 0.3. Dollar Swiss had a good week. Uh, it was up just over a percent. And that was after, um, you know, a one, two, three, four, five, six 
<clears throat> red bars six weeks in a row for lower and uh, an inside week, but uh, but it did close up about 1%. And gold was pretty much unchanged. The S&P was up about a half percent and crude WTI was down two point, just under 3%. Um, it did rally a bit on <clears throat> On uh, Friday, it looks like it's up a little bit here on the uh, since this, since the market's opened here a couple hours ago. Um, so those are your weeklies, and then one thing I've been watching pretty closely here is this um, Euro Aussie chart. I'm trying to catch a top, I've gotten burned. Um, trying to sell. You can see here. Scrunch this up a little bit. <clears throat> you know, it seems to be losing some momentum here on the Euro Aussie. We had the pretty ugly bar here on Friday, and uh, <clears throat> I started selling it somewhere around 162.10. <clears throat> that did not work. You know, and I was playing Aussie for the long side. We cut that out after the failed break over 70 cents. We got out of that under 69.50 which actually looks like a pretty good cut. Um, it's closed, you know, on the lows of the week. So you're Aussie watching this indecision here, maybe a little bit of momentum loss, a topping pattern. Um, Euro Sterling was another one that caught my eye. Find it in my... Here's, here's the daily. You know, we've had one, two, kind of three indecisive days in a row. Um, you know, perhaps that's uh, that's running out of gas. And then the only uh, the only outside day that I saw on Friday was Euro Stocky bearish and golfing. I'm not really sure what that was from. Maybe just, you know, Euro crosses in general are pretty heavy. Um, so... That's a, that's a look at you know the inside and outside uh, inside and outside bars the, the weekly and the dailies for the, you know for Friday uh, on the dailies um, so let's get down to uh, take a closer look at some of the pairs um, Aussie dollar again I've been fighting this started buying it bought the bought the break over here. About 70 cents. It was not up there very long, and then it went down all week. You know, one, four to five days last week it was down, and this is the lowest close we've seen in a, quite some time. Um, oh, you know, about a month. And you know, this looks like it's probably going to go down and try to test that flash flash low that we saw. Uh, way down at 67.50 at least on trading view I think it, I think it really got down to 67.15 um, you know Greg McKenna and a couple of a couple of the uh, other guys that we follow on Twitter are calling you know sub 60 this year so that would be a pretty powerful move and it's it's tough I tried playing it from the long side it was massively oversold and it <clears throat> all it's done is gone down all week. So, you know, maybe you get, if you get a dovish sounding Powell on Wednesday and the dollar comes under pressure a little bit and you get a, a bit of a risk rally, then I think Aussie dollar or Kiwi could be um, good ways to express that. You know, we'll, we'll take a look at uh, some of the fixed income and equity indices because there were some interesting bars there too. Here's zero. Just heavy. Um, I think it was FX Macro said something on Friday that um, the U.S. is now looking at tariffs, auto tariffs in Germany. That probably explains why the euro had three pretty big down days. We you see this big bearish engulfing day that was on Wednesday, and then Thursday we had kind of a smaller, uneventful full day, and then Friday just got hammered again. So, you know, it looks like it wants to retrace this move from, uh, you know, that 111 is kind of the key area. So for us, it's pretty much 111 
and the top side be 113.50. Uh, cable came under pressure just with the broad dollar strength. Nothing really new out of, of there. Kiwi, the weakest on the board, down all five days last week. Uh, you know, commodity currency pressure, uh, weaker oil, lead dollar CAD higher, up four out of five days. Um, there's a dollar Swiss. Uh, and then dollar yen just seems to be kind of hanging around this 108.80 on the top side and 107.80, call it 107.80, 108 uh, A break either side of that should be uh, the next, uh, next direction and dollar yen. Uh, there's dollar max. A lot of people calling for a break of these lows here, which comes in at like 1908. Uh, one guy I was talking to was saying, how about being long the dollar index, but short dollar mex? Which is kind of interesting. I don't know if I love mex longs, especially if when we take a look at some of these equity charts and see what, you know, without a dovish sounding Powell on Wednesday, uh, I do think that these equities could come under pressure. Um, we looked at a few of those other euro yen. We can see what euro yen is doing. Following this too closely, doesn't look like anything of much interest. Euronaki, we talked about 985, 975. Uh, I think the Norges Bank will, you know, they might start. I think the risk is that they, you know, they don't hike rates if they, it could sound a bit dovish. And then, you know, maybe you get a, a pop in Euronaki on that. Let's hop over to some of the other markets we are following, and here's the S and P 500 cash. Uh, the daily, there's the daily. Let's go to the weekly on these. There's some interesting looking charts. Unchanged on the week in the cash. Um, you know, Doji week after a big up week. So I think there could be some some sort of pullback. Um, there's your. Future equivalent, S&P futures. NASDAQ, pretty ugly looking week. You know, we started off pretty strong and then closed basically unchanged. The futures don't look quite this bearish. How about the Nikkei futures? There's another, uh, another doji. There's the DAX down week. And there is the FTSE. Those are all weekly charts we're looking at here. Um, you know, we had this little reversal higher week in oil, which then um, gave up all of that. Still haven't taken out this low here. 50, most people are talking about this 50 50 area. Um, I'd say a break of that, and uh, you can get some more downside in oil. We are short a little bit of oil still. Had this on for a while. Also, short, short Brent. Um, here's Brent, Brent crude, you know, looks pretty similar to the oil chart. Did, did make a marginally lower, lower, but you see, we do have these old lows here, just under 60. Um, let's take a look at the U S 10 year. This is, this is interesting for me. We're, we're, we're holding this 2% level in the 10 year yield. Uh, I think it was about 205 has been the low. And a lot of uh, technicians were calling for 198 to 2%. Um, you know, if, if we, I, we don't think that the Fed is going to cut rates this week, we think that you know, the likelihood of a July cut is, is, uh, is very high. In fact, um, some people I've been talking to, if let's say the Fed doesn't cut this week, which we don't expect. <clears throat> We're going to have the G20. We don't think any there will be any progress made on the trade front. We think risk could stay under pressure. If the Fed, if the markets are under decent selling pressure, the equity indices, we think the Fed is going to have to cut 50 basis points in July. And if they don't, we think we could see a real stock market sell off, which would catch a lot of people by surprise, especially in the middle of summer. Where you know the markets are, most traders are only kind of keeping one eye on the market. Uh, we do think that that would be a uh, 
we think that they would, they would need to actually cut 50. 25 just wouldn't even it wouldn't do anything. Stocks would sell off on a 25. The market would be very disappointed. And you can see, I mean, we've been going down now. You know, U.S. 10-year yields peaked, <clears throat> you know, up at this 325 area. And it's they've basically been selling off now since October when we had that, that first equity correction. And, you know, the positioning has got really, really, um, you know, very, very long 10-year Tenure notes, and, uh, and I, th- I think I read it was like one of the largest um, longs uh, across kind of the fixed income complex in the U.S. since 2007. I think I read. So positioning is becoming a problem. Um, if Powell is not does not sound all that dovish, you're going to get a massive unwind, and this will um, lead to you know higher U.S. yields. And uh, I think there, there's a lot of guys with some probably a little bit late to the party with this uh, this lower yield bet. And uh, positioning is definitely becoming a problem. It's just going to be harder and harder. So as long as we kind of stay above in the 10 years above this 205 or 2% level, um, the risk is for higher yields on a less dovish sounding um, Powell. And that would that would hurt risk as, as well. I think you know EM currencies come under pressure. Um, you know risk risk proxies. Um, you know the Aussie ends of the world. <clears throat> Here's gold weekly. Um, you know I've had a nice kind of three four weeks of higher. We topped out right at these old highs. Um, you know 1350, 60, 1370. Take a look at this daily. There's a massive reversal um, in both gold and here's the silver chart. So silver is even uglier. You can see it went up to 15, 12, it looks like, and then on Friday, rever- everything reversed. You know, now we're, I could draw this trend line. If I can find my trend line, this is again is on the dailies. You know, we got this pretty decent daily uptrend line that we looks like we touched here on the open or as silver right now it's a, gold's pretty much unchanged silver's up about 0.25 percent um at least that's coming from my bloomberg this is a delayed quote i believe um so that's a, a pretty pretty good trend line um gold's a little bit choppier you know we did have that pullback but for me <clears throat> under 1324, call 1320 or above these highs would be the next, you know, 20, $20 move. Um, let's take a look at the VIX, see what that's doing. On support, a bunch of daily lows right here from, from the close on Friday. Um, yeah, so I think that's pretty much it. I think we, we covered the weeklies and the weeklies. It's, uh, the chart patterns of interest. Um, like I said, heavy macro week. We have four central bank decisions, and uh, we're expecting the market to actually move a bit this week. So, good luck in the week ahead. You'll hear from us on the European Open, and uh, I will touch base. Maybe midweek, uh, maybe after the Fed, if we get some sort of outsized move on Wednesday, I'll, uh, I'll give you guys an update. All right, good luck. Have a great week. Cheers.